Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the marijuana sector. So first up is the marijuana index. You can see here this is the North American index. This is a five-day chart. There was a big drop-off today. It, it, it had hit 321 up here and then it uh, dropped off right at the open and it failed to get back up to those previous levels. It's going to need to break above 310 to head higher. If it were to drop below 300, that's going to signal downside risk. So keep an eye on those two levels. As you can see on the one day chart there was a huge drop off at the open okay so if you look at the United States index it had a very similar uh, pattern you know big drop off at the open failed to get back up to the previous high and, and closed near the lower end of the trading range okay so so it, we're looking at this five day chart you know it, it, it's cooling down just a little bit it's still holding the, the the support line here but it's right at the bottom uh, of the trend line and so it's going to be important that that it ends up uh, you know holding that otherwise we could get a little bit of a correction. If you look here at the Canadian index, it, it cooled down a little bit today as well. As you can see, it's hitting this 750 to 770 resistance zone. This is where it topped out at after making that peak back in January. So a couple times here, it's hit this level, you know, topping out between 760 and 780. Right now, it hit the uh, 778 level. So that's the exact same level and it's pulling back. So they have the program set to sell at this zone. And so we got to see whether or not they're going to let it break above. If it breaks above 780, th then we could see it run back up here to this thousand level. That that was the previous highs from back here in January. Or, or if it fails to break 750, we could see it pull back and possibly test a, a lower level, uh, possibly down to uh, the, the 690 level, which would be the next key support zone to hold. So yeah, so we have to keep an eye on the, the, the marijuana uh, sector right now. Uh, it's been pushing super hard, and it looks like it could possibly take a breather. If you look at uh, ticker symbol MJ. Uh, uh, th this is the marijuana uh, alternative harvest ETF. It uh, does also have tobacco stocks, but but it did form the black candle today. Notice that's the first black candle that formed during this uptrend. A black candle forms w when the stock is up on the day, but it closes below the open. It's a signal that the bears were attacking. Um, you know, there was a rally off of low of day and it is holding EMA for support. Notice all these candles are above the pink line. I I if it closes below that level, that's going to be the signal that, it that it's breaking down and signaling downside risk. As long as it's holding, there's still more upside potential. It's going to have to break through that 36 resistance zone. Okay, take a look at HMLSF. This is Horizons Marijuana Life Science Index ETF, and this covers the Canadian um, marijuana sector. And, and so it did form a red candle today. A red candle formed, but not a bearish reversal pattern. There was some pretty good volume behind the red uh, the, the, the red volume bar. It did bounce off of EMA4 support at 1679. All of these candles have been closing above that level since back here on the 15th when there was a close above this dotted purple line. That's the middle Bollinger Band and 20-day simple moving average. That signaled the start of a new uptrend. As long as this pink line's holding, it signals it can keep pushing higher. Once it closes below, that, that that's when it could possibly consolidate and test some of those lower moving averages. Okay, take a look at Canopy Growth, the number one cannabis company in the world. It it, it had a, you know finally formed a, a red candle today. It has formed a couple of red candles uh, along on the way but but it, um yeah it it, it was uh t it, you know took a pretty big breather it came down and tested ema4 support if you look up here it does have uh, rsi at 75 at 76 uh you've got the uh, uh fasto with the crossover here when the green line crosses over the red line to the downside it's a signal the bears are cooling down you want to see our or fasto stay above 80 if it were to drop below 80 you want to see it bounce like this bounce like that um if it were to drop below like this that's going to signal uh, you know that, that that's having a bigger consolidation. That's what happened right here. Okay, so so what's going on now? is it's been riding EMA4 support ever since this candle right here. It's been staying above the, 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 the pink line. As long as that level keeps holding, it signals more upside potential. You could see when it hit that level today, that was the reload level. People loaded off that, got a nice little rally back up to that 52 level. Uh, what it needs to do is make a new high close. It's got to get above this pre, the, the, high, the, the closing price from yesterday. That was the all-time high close level. It needs to get above that level to keep pushing higher. Um, if it drops below 49.50, 
58, you're going to see it test the, the uh, EMA 8 at 46.75. You know, these levels really need to hold. It would be a bearish change in trend if they broke. That That's where you could possibly see some consolidation. The the, the one thing that I, is a, a little bit of a red flag in my mind is this big volume bar. There was 37.5 million shares traded. As you can see, it was the most volume, uh, I think, ever in, in a trading day for the stock. And, and, and it was a red candle at the top of a run. So so many times, you know, when that happens, that that's a sign that the, 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 the big players uh, locked in some gains and that uh, possible consolidation could be coming. Now, it almost formed bearish meeting line reversal pattern. The the, the uh, close yesterday was at, or it was at 52.40, and today's close was at, at, at 52. So it wasn't right at that level. So that, that pattern did not form. So so it was close. Um, but but uh, yeah, it, we were looking for that pattern to possibly form today um, in the chat. Okay, if you look at CGC on, on the 15 minute chart, you could see here it, it, it closed below the middle Bollinger Band currently at 52.80. It needs to hold that level. It's got to stay above that level. If that level uh, turns into resistance, it's going to signal downside risk. Right now, it has the symmetrical triangle pattern. You have a ascending support and descending resistance. And so one of these two levels is going to break. If it drops below the 50 simple moving average at 51.28 tomorrow during the regular trading, that's going to signal downside risk. Right now, it is trading at 50.90 in after hours trading. And so that that, that is putting it uh, you know, below this 50 simple moving average level. And that does signal downside risk. You know, that that would uh, be putting that uh, EMA4 at 49.58 on deck. If that 49.58 breaks tomorrow, that is going to be a signal that, that that it's possibly consolidating and that, that it could come down here and test this 100 simple moving average at 48.38 on the 15 minute chart. Okay, let's take a look at TIL right here. Ticker symbol TLRY had another big move today. Closed up nearly uh, 15%. Congrats, everybody. Had another gap up open. It has RSI at 88.19, just really pushing. It did have the bearish crossover on Fasto. Okay, uh, yeah, plus DI is just pushing up here at 63.44. Uh, th there are, like, I, if you watch the other videos, I pointed out some unfilled gaps in the chart. You know, there's way, one way down here, and then there's one, two, three in a row right there. There was a fourth gap. Uh, th there was another gap right here that, that, that formed today, but that gap did fill with this low lower wick on today's candle. So this gap is filled. It came down and hit EMA4 at 75.33 and it bounced right off of that level, ran back right up to 88. It did form a sp spinning top today. That That's an indecision candle. And it, it was trading at 88.10 after hours trading. So it is trading below the open. Um, what you really want to see is you just want to see it keep staying above this pink line that's been holding the whole time since this candle back here on the 15th when there was a close above. As long as it holds, it signals more upside potential. You know, once it breaks, it's going to signal downside risk. Now, with the, the three gap up opens in a row, there was a, a little gap right here as well, but that gap did fill. So that was a one, two, three. It, that, that does form the bearish three gap ups reversal pattern. And, and so we will be on the lookout for uh, bearish reversal confirmation for TLRY. Um, it, as you can see here, after I was trading it at 88.10, that puts it below the middle Bollinger Band, which is also the 20 simple moving average at 88. 86. So that's the dotted purple line right here. If you see that that middle Bollinger Band here on the 15 minute chart at 88.66 turn into resistance, that's going to be putting the, the 50 simple moving average at 81 on deck. Keep in mind the moving averages are always moving, but that's where they are at currently, are at currently when, when I made this video. So 88.10, that's putting it below that middle Bollinger Band. So keep an eye on it. Th that middle Bollinger Band has been holding, you know, the, the one day it got below was back here on the 30th, but since this uptrend started, it's been, it's been key support. So it's going to be a bearish change in trend if it turns into resistance. Okay, take a look at CRON, uh, Cronus Group, another big gap up open today, closed up nearly 12%. Uh, these are all charts that we've been working on, you know, so these annotations uh, are, are old and I've been adding to it. Um, but yeah, you could see here, it's RSI is getting back towards that 70 level. Um, 
the, the, the big thing on this chart is the black candle. So it did have the black candle today. That's the first one during this rally. Um, you know, usually when, when the black candle forms, you know, the, uh, you know our, our signal is to head to the sidelines. It signals uh, uh, indecision. It f signals the bears are attacking, especially when it forms at a top or during an uptrend, and especially when it's above the upper Bollinger Band. And so this is this is that black candle where it signals that it could pull back. Um, if, if it gets, it, it, the whole key right now is it's got to get above this closing price, the high close from back on the 28th, it failed to close above that level. That's the all-time high close. If that turns into resistance, then it could consolidate. Um, there is an unfilled gap between Friday and Monday, and so it could come down here to this, you know, just below $10 and try to fill that gap, If it, or just below $10.50, if that EMA4 fails to hold at $11.34, and if this uh, resistance level, the high close from the 28th, fails to break. There was really big volume behind the move. There was the lower wick on today's candle, so people were loading off of low of day, you know, but, but you know, who's going to be able to, uh, you know, are they going to be able to keep pushing it higher? We'll just have to see. If we look at this uh, uh, CRON 15-minute uh, chart, you can see here it pulled back and uh, dropped below that middle Bollinger Band into the close. It needs to get above the, the, the open from, from today, you can see it tried to get above that level at 2.30 and it failed to break and then pulled back. And so it's really all about this, uh, you know, 13.25 uh, zone. It's going to have to break above that level to head higher. 13.20 zone, um, it, 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 I think maybe 13.19 to be exact. And then uh, down here, it, it's, it needs to hold this ascending support line and get back above that middle Bollinger Band at 12.63. If those levels turn into resistance, it could pull back, test this 50 simple moving average at 11.85. That's the huge level to hold. I mean, right now it's at 1226, so so it's well below these levels. It's down here. It's near the uh, you know the lower uh, range of, of of the end of day, and and so you know it's all about holding 1185 right now. A drop below that, and then you could see it come down and test 11. Okay, take a look at IIPR. Okay, this did form a bearish reversal pattern yesterday. Um, it formed a bearish dark cloud cover. Okay, the, uh, today's red candle uh, did confirm that pattern. Uh, it, there was a big bounce off of low of day. You could see it came down here and hit the middle Bollinger Band at 38.55. People loaded and they re they were rewarded with the big bounce. Keep in mind, whenever a stock that's in a, a in an upper upper Bollinger Band channel pulls back and tests that middle Bollinger Band, that is the reload level if support holds. So good job to the technical traders who took advantage of this setup. Um, now it needs to stay above EMA 13 at 40. 83. If that level breaks, it could come back down and test that middle Bollinger Band. To get pushing higher again, it's got to get above EMA4 at 42.69. If that level turns into resistance, it's going to signal more downside risk. Okay, if you look at IIPR on the 15-minute chart, you could see it got back above the middle Bollinger Band at 41.48. It has to hold that level. Um, it, it's got the, the, the 50, 200, and 100-day simple moving averages stacked up here between 42 31 and 4321. It's going to have to break those moving averages to head higher. Um, if it fails to do so and it drops below that middle Bollinger Band, that is going to signal downside risk. Okay, take a look at ACBFF. Okay, so it did fail to break that 200 day simple moving average. It's been working on it for several days now. It had closed above that level back here on the 27th and then it, once again on the 29th, but then it dropped back below. It, it, it broke it intraday. It's currently at 704, but it failed to close above and then now today there was a bearish close back below EMA 4 at 670. It has to hold the, the EMA 8 at 660. That's this line line right here. If that level breaks then you're likely to see the 100 day simple moving average at 628 tested. If that broke then you could see it come back down, test the middle Bollinger Band and the 50 day simple moving average in that 580 to $6 support zone. The downside risk for this stock is the market makers drive it down to this gap. There's a gap between these two candles. A drop down to five dollars would fill that gap okay let's look at a p h q f okay so this one formed a red candle today let's see at 1403 and 1406 okay so what that's doing is, is that is forming the uh the, I had that on the wrong one. It formed the bearish meeting line reversal pattern. In my mind, that, that's 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 it right there. It's only off by a couple pennies. So this this is the pattern. Um, you know, this does signal downside risk. It, it, it's where the the uh, close yesterday and the close today are at the same level. It, yesterday the close was at 1406. 
Today, the close is at 14.03. That does signal downside risk, okay? So we, we tried to uh, uh, recognize uh, candlestick patterns earlier in the trading day to try to give us a clue as to whether or not, uh, you know, stock's going to break down, you know, because it's all about early pattern uh, recognition. You know, the risk on this chart is that there's a gap down here, and, and so a drop down here to $9 would fill that gap. I'm not saying it's going to drop to that level. I'm just saying that is the downside risk. Um, right now, it needs needs to hold EMA 13 at 1340. Um, it, you know, since since a ACBFF and APHQF, even though they are two of the top marijuana companies in the world, they, they, they trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange, but they also trade on over-the-counter. They're not big board stocks, quote-unquote, so that they don't have the after-hours trading like, like you would get from CGC, Crone, and uh, Tilray. And so, uh, yeah, th 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 this is all about 1340 right now, so have that written down for the stock if you're trading it. If it gets below that level, that's going to signal downside risk. And you could see it come down to EMA 8 at 1242. Okay, take a look at OGRMF here. Um, yeah, th this has just been slowly kind of breaking down. And uh, yeah, you can see here that that drop below 70 on RSI is not a good sign. Um, look what happens when it drops below uh, back here. We'll, we'll take a look at what happens. That's when this breakdown happened. Um, you know, that that's where there was uh, uh, some consolidation in, in, in these levels, you know, where, where you had a little pullback, you know, and there was a pretty healthy pullback on, on this one right here. You know, when you get above 70 for an extended period of time, it has to stay above that level. If it drops below and 70 turns into resistance, that, that signals that it could be breaking down. And so this dropping to 69 today is a clue that, that the chart is cooling down. Same thing with uh, the, the black line failed to get above the red line. That's another red flag. Has to stay above 80. If, if, you, if you see Fasto dropping below 80, that's going to be a red flag. Notice how the Bull, the bears are heating up with the uptick, and the bulls have been cooling down. Notice how Plusti has been running down. Okay, so those are red flags. Today there was a close just below EMA four at four ninety seven support. That is a red flag. That does signal downside risk. It needs to hold, get back above that level. It needs to hold it. You know, basically closed at that level. It, it, you know, the close just below it is a red flag. If that turns into resistance tomorrow, you know, you're going to see this four eighty three retested. You can see that was a little update today. If that broke, you know, that, that's where it could work its way back down and, and, and possibly come down and test that middle Bollinger Band at 430. That's the downside risk for stocks in an uptrend. The bottom of the channel is the middle Bollinger Band and the top of the channel is the upper Bollinger Band. And so when stocks that are riding the upper Bollinger Band and they pull back, if EMAs 4, 8, and 13 fail to hold, they come back down to that middle Bollinger Band. That is always the reload level if support holds. Okay, let's look at IGC here. If support fails to hold, what happens is if there's a close below the middle Bollinger Band, there, a, a new downtrend could begin. And so you don't want to be holding long when, when candles are forming below the middle Bollinger Band on the daily chart. So IGC came down and it did bounce today. Um, you know, it had formed this uh, bearish hammer reversal pattern. That, that pattern was confirmed on this red candle. Today, a black candle formed inside the previous red candle. You know, that does for a bullish homing pigeon reversal pattern. And so we will be on the lookout for bullish reversal confirmation. It's isn't the strongest pattern, but it is a bullish reversal pattern. And so basically the, the, the share price is wedged between two levels right now. It's between EMA 8 at 136 support and EMA 4 at 144 resistance. So for tomorrow, going forward, trading above 144 signals upside potential. Could maybe run back up to $2. Trading below 136 signals downside risk. It would likely get a drop down to that EMA 13 at 119. The, the big red flags on this chart are the unfilled gaps. You've got a big gap here. You know, a drop down to about 77 would fill that gap. And then you've got a gap down here, a drop down to, I think it was 53 or 54. I guess it was 54 we were saying would fill that gap. I think this gap down here did fill if my... Uh, memory was correct. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's look at MMNFF here. Medmen. Yeah, this was a, th this is a red flag. You know, it's a red flag that, that we had a big move for the top dogs, and then all these little ones got kind of hammered today. And so it is a sign that the bears are attacking. They've just really sucked people in, institutions into these uh, larger names. But, you know, so they're holding up, it seems like, a little better. But the but some of these other ones are, are, are looking like, like the bears are attacking hard, including Medmen here. 
at, w with this big red candle today. You know, it broke above and made a new all-time high today. This is the complete history of the trading of the stock. It just started trading back in May, and, and this was the previous high back in June. You know, th that was tested yesterday at the $5 level. It closed right at that level. Today, it broke above, but then it pulled back below, and then you have this red candle that formed. It did form bearish hair me reversal pattern with a really big red candle. Usually you don't see this big of a candle for a bearish hair me. Um, you, you know, th th this is, uh, you know, signaling downside risk. It did close below EMA 4 at 434. So if you see a break uh, EMA 8 at 4, 6, 414 tomorrow, notice how that, that line line ha had been holding. The, this stock had been dropping down to the, the EMA 8. Sometimes they do that and that had been the level it's been holding. You're going to see a drop down to $4 and test EMA 13. That's going to be the really big level to hold. You can see that these candles did test that zone on previous pullbacks. If it were to break, you could see it drop down to this 350 zone and see this 50-day simple moving average and, and middle Bollinger Band retested. It's a big red flag when you have a giant red volume bar uh, on the red day. That's not what you want to see if you're a bull. You know, you, you, that, that, that's usually a sign that the big traders had uh, locked in gains. Okay, let's look here at, at finally at NBEV. Uh, they had some news right at end of day. We had an alert in our uh, chat from our stock bot that this was, uh, you know, it had been halted. And then the news came out and it was about uh, something about they tested some uh, cannabis beverages. And so they're trying to get into the uh, cannabis beverage game. So we're going to see if this will get this thing rolling. Um, yeah, the, the, the big thing going on here, in my mind, it's just all about this red line. Uh, the 200-day simple moving average at 231, it's been resistance. You can see when it's been tested. And so if it can break above that level, that's going to signal upside potential, and you're going to have uh, the 300-day the simple moving average at 277 on deck. If it fails to break, it's going to be the sell zone. It's the sell zone until it turns into support. You know, you could see a run between, you know, the current level at 190 and that 230 level. But if it fails to break with the close above, it will signal temporary top. It needs to stay above the 50- and 100-day simple moving averages at 185. If it were to drop below, that would be a red flag. You could get the uh, middle Bollinger Band at 162 tested. Okay, thanks for viewing this video. Oh yeah, let's see what do we have here. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you the uh, the the 15 minute chart here real quick, and this shows the, uh, the the big spike on the news, and then it then it ran and then pulled back. It was holding EMA four at 188 after being well above the upper Bollinger Band. So the chart's still strong. It just uh, is uh, um, you know it just had that pullback after the big move. It looks like they dumped some shares into the news. So we'll see if this is going to be a one day move or if maybe people they pulled it back and people loaded and they're going to try to spring it forward. So keep an eye on MBEV tomorrow. Okay, thanks for viewing this video. If you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis, come check out the chat. All right, thanks.